And if I were to look at 10 campaigns, six are gonna bomb, two are gonna do pretty good, and two are going to knock him out of the park. First, we need to make sure that we're tracking. And we have to make sure that we're tracking properly for any marketing campaign or effort we're gonna do. Now, the second thing is if it's not profitable, so rule number two, if it's not profitable, kill it. Sounds extreme, but <laughs> if it's not profitable, kill it. I wanna emphasize how important this is. Uh, it needs to be yes or no. It needs to be in KPI or in, in, in profitability or out of profitability. There is no in-betweener gray area of just continuing to do something, not knowing if it's profitable or not, or or keeping something out of profitability and thinking, oh, it's, it's going to become profitable, just give it another month or another week or whatever that is. It has to be profitable. Now, I say kill it, but what that means is stop the, go back to the drawing board, refine it, optimize it, and continue pushing forward. It doesn't mean if it, your fa first Facebook ad campaign completely bombs and it doesn't do really well or whatever the campaign is doesn't do really well that you just throw up your hands and say Facebook ads doesn't work or Google ads or email marketing or social or whatever that is doesn't work. That's not what I'm saying. But what I mean is you need to stop amplifying something if it's not profitable. And the reason this is called the three rules of profitable marketing is because your goal in business is to make profit. And so I'm trying to save you from not from losing profit and not and not being profitable. That's what we're trying to save ourselves from. So if something is not profitable after a determined amount of time, and this might vary based on your business size, you might, you might determine that this campaign we want to run for one week. And at the end of that week, seven days, if it's not profitable and hitting at least a break even in profitability or, or greater, then we have to kill it. We have to go back to the drawing board. We have to queue up the next campaign, the new assets, the new audiences, the new strategy. We have to queue that up and continue testing because marketing is a process of testing, refining, and optimizing. You're going to go through this whole process over and over again, and you need to try to fight to get the best results. But the thing is, Everything doesn't win right out of the gate because, and if you expect for everything to win right away, you're gonna be wildly disappointed because marketing is a process. And if I were to look at 10 campaigns, six are gonna bomb, two are gonna do pretty good, and two are going to knock it out of the park. And so if you can follow this process, you're gonna be able to mitigate losses and save yourself from investing in things that are not profitable. To know if you're profitable, you need to first identify and determine what your break-even numbers are. And this is gonna vary across the board. So whatever the marketing strategy is, it's gonna kind of vary across the board. I typically will look at break-even numbers when it comes to ads. And I look at it like that because ads, you have to pay to acquire customers. So I need to know what's the max amount that I can pay to acquire a customer. And that's kind of that first that's that first stage because breaking even at the beginning is okay if we know we're gonna generate lifetime value and additional purchases on the back end because we need to constantly be acquiring new customers and it is seven times more expensive to acquire a new customer than to retain one. And so I'm okay with breaking even, but I'm not okay with losing money. Uh, so breaking even is like a good starting point, but ideally even on cold traffic and your new acquisition campaigns, you do want to be profitable in those. And if we're not profitable, then we're just gonna kind of leave them. And so what we wanna do is we need to determine break even numbers. Because if you're acquiring customers for less than your break even, then technically you'll be profitable. For example, let's say you sell a $20 product and the COGS, the cost of goods uh, sold, completely shipped to the door, so from the manufacturer through you, after processing fees and everything and shipping to the customer's door, let's say that you're running a 50% margin, which is, a, is, is just a simple number for this case and that's a good margin to have. So if you were running and you had a 50% margin, then what that means is you have $10 of profit to kind of work with within a single product sale. And I'm doing really simple here. I'm not talking about blended uh, blended cogs or blended product and blended break-evens. I'm just talking about single product. If you had a $20 product, 50% margin, you have $10 to work with, meaning you can pay up to $10 to acquire a customer before you start losing 
money. And so if I'm looking at it from an ad standpoint, so to apply this to an advertising standpoint, if I'm running Facebook or uh, sh Google shopping ads, then it means I could have, I need to have at least a ROAS, a return on ad spend of at least two to break even. Now I would wanna have more, I'd wanna have like a, a 2.5, a three or higher to really be profitable. Because if I had a two, it means that I paid $10 to acquire a $20 sale and I just basically broke even. And so a simple calculation for this is to take 100 divided by your profit margin and this will give you your break even return on ad spend. And the reason I'm talking ads is because ads are the, are the greatest way to acquire new customers predictably in our expert opinion and from our experience for doing this for over eight years, actually almost 10 years, which is crazy. Uh, but ads are the most predictable way to acquire new customers. And so I like to think in terms of break even ROAS because that's primarily how you're gonna be acquiring new customers. So 100 divided by your profit margin, if it's 50%, you take 100 divided by 50, which is how I got to two X return on ad spend for that example that I gave you. But in doing all of this, you need to know that you're either profitable or you're not profitable. So in all your efforts, as you're tracking and as you're ascending through the marketing operating system, as you're ascending through your marketing to marketing greatness in Zendum, as you're doing it, you need to use this as your measuring stick. First, am I tracking this? Second, Am I making sure that these are profitable? Because if they're not profitable, then I should not be amplifying it. I should not be scaling. I need to go back to the drawing board. I need to identify how I can improve, how I can optimize, and how I can make sure that my marketing is profitable.